Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, how to evaluate a lab. At the end of every lab report in IB, we certainly want to look back on the lab and, and evaluate what's happened. This is a, a final step that comes after the conclusion. Now, as you can see in the, uh, the IB standards, as you see here on the screen, um, they, uh, there's really two things they're looking for in order to get a five and a six. They want to see basically two things in, in regard to the evaluation. They want to see the strengths and weaknesses discussed. They want a clear understanding of the uh, methodological issues involved in establishing the conclusion. And so they want to see that you understand what you're doing and you understand, you know, is, is this valid, is this not? So if, for this example, if I was writing out my evaluation of the paper, I would talk about the fact that, well, these data points really did seem to line up. Um, yeah, if I knew the uncertainties, I would say they all fit within the uncertainty. And uh, the uncertainties on this probably are not going to be very large. I, I think using multimeters, you're going to have a very low uncertainty. And so that certainly is a strength. Now, weaknesses, um, you know, you want to look at the fact that well, maybe certainly in this case, we only took one trial. We only did this once. Uh, if we're trying to verify whether the rule for multiple resistors in parallel is correct, we only used 150 ohm resistors. We didn't try it again with uh, 300 ohm resistors or you know 10,000 ohm resistors even. We only used one resistance, and so maybe that would that would have some issues. Um, you know, we want to look at you know. What were some issues that you know happening here? I noticed that uh, one thing I noticed that here is that the power supply. When I set the power supply, it was set to three point one volts. But as you can see, especially in parallel, that that voltage dipped quite a bit, quite seriously. In series, that voltage changed a little bit, but not too too much. And so I may want to talk about what's going on with that. Um, if you had any issues with uh, measuring or if you, you got weird readings, maybe the multimeter was jumping around a lot. Maybe if I was uh, trying to measure the current and I could never really tell exactly what it was, that's certainly something I'd want to talk about in this section. I'd also want to talk about a discussion of realistic and relevant suggestions to improve and extend the investigation. So not only in, you know, make improvements on some of the weaknesses you've done before, but how can you extend it? Where else could you go with this? So one example might be you know, to say, hey, I want to do this experiment with uh, you know, various values of resistors. Maybe you want to do this experiment not with the same resistors, but add multiple different types of resistors. Certainly, certainly that'd be a very different experiment and the analysis would be much more involved. Um, one thing, I was, when I was looking at this data, I was actually sort of curious about this section right here. Why was the voltage dropping so much? When I set up this experiment, I set the power supply to 3.1 volts and it never really changed. And I was trying to you know, figure out what, what, what could be. And, and eventually I, I, I looked at this and I want to know, I thought, well, what was the difference between parallel and series? The parallel circuits really changed a lot while series really didn't. And so I was thinking about this, and I, I came up with an idea. Now, I wasn't sure if this is right or not, but I came up with an idea, and my thought was this. Uh, when I have my circuit, as you can see over here, uh, I have my power supply. Here's my power supply here. And uh, I set up my voltmeter here. And then I have my multiple resistors in parallel. Um, I was always assuming that the power supply would provide a fixed amount of voltage. Obviously it didn't. That voltmeter is changing quite a bit. I remembered a lesson where we talked about the fact that inside a power supply you really have uh, uh, something providing some EMF. You also have a little internal, uh, internal resistance there. Now as we added resistors and the total resistance went down, well, what happened, I think, might be that the little internal resistor right here, the internal resistance, took on more of the voltage. You see, the voltage I'm measuring with this voltmeter is simply the voltage of all these resistors. If the internal resistor was taking more of that energy, well, maybe that would cause the reading in my voltmeter to go down because on the power supply, it always read the same thing. 
So to investigate this, I, I looked at the internal resistance equation. Uh, obviously, we have the EMF is equal to the exterior voltage uh, multiply, uh, plus I times the internal resistance. Now, I look at this equation, and I have two of these values. I have the external voltage. That's my voltage I measured. I have the current. So what I did is I rearranged this equation a little bit. I, I tweaked things around, and I said uh, the external voltage is equal to negative IR, current, times internal resistance, um, and then that's uh, plus the EMF produced by the power supply. Um, again, I didn't know if this was correct or not, but this is a Y equals MX plus B equation. And if I graphed the voltage on the y-axis versus the current on the x-axis, if it formed a straight line, we might have, we might have something here. So we're going to try this. We're going to insert a uh, chart. Well, if I can get this to work, there we go. Okay, I'm going to insert a chart. And, and as you can see in this equation here, uh, well, if I can do it, hello, there we go. Uh, I'm going to select data. I'm going to add some data. Now, the data I want to add, actually, uh, sometimes Excel gets a little busy. <laughs> you want to probably be a little neater than I'm doing right here, but I'm just trying to show you how this works. Um, on my y-axis, I want my external voltage. So I'm going to select my y values, or it's going to be the voltages here. My x values, I want to have as the current. So I'll select all the currents here. And again, I don't know if this is true, but if this is true, hit OK, well, I should see a straight line. Hmm, I do see a straight line. That is a straight line. That, that, that's sort of what I was expecting. And what I can do is I can add a trend line so I can see exactly, uh, I'll show you that window, it pops up on another screen here. Uh, display the equation. Yeah, you know, that that really looks like a straight line. If I look at my equation, you know, uh, so you know, I'll write my equation here on the board here. So this is uh, y equals negative point zero zero five six x plus three point one five four whatever. Um, if if I look at this and I compare it to my equation I already have of the voltage equals the negative. Um, current multiplied by the internal resistance plus our uh, EMF, the EMF 3.1, that 3.1 here, that was what the power supply was already reading. Hmm, getting interesting here. And I'm also noticing here we have a very small EMF, and that's probably because... Um, I probably selected milliamps. Let me just fix that real quick. <laughs> yes, Mr. Reynolds can be a moron sometimes. Let's select the actual amps. There we go. Sorry, I selected milliamps, not amps. And so what I'm seeing here, what I think is happening, is that the, uh, the power supply that I was using, I think it has an internal resistance of about 5.59 ohms. And I... because. It you know, looks like that matches the data here, and it may account for the fact that when we had a you know very low total outside resistance, that 5.59 ohms was all of a sudden not insignificant. It fits the data, and so that's something I'm probably going to talk about in my evaluation section. I might want to mention this. I found that. I also might want to extend the experiment to find, you know, try to specifically do an experiment to find the internal resistance of the power supply. Now, this is pretty deep. Going into this, this is fairly deep. This is probably not expected on a, a typical paper. But if you're looking really to go into the, your experiment and figure out exactly what's going on, these are the kind of things you could think about. If you notice on the series circuit, uh, the in, little internal resistance of 5.59 really never made a difference on the voltage. The reason for that is that our total resistances were huge. And so they took on basically all of the voltage. In fact, we see as the external resistance went up, the voltage across the voltmeter also went up almost to that 3.15 point. 
And I bet if I ran all of this, I could find a similar number. I bet I could find some similar data. Just an interesting way of looking at this and evaluating your paper.